What's your ghost, creepy, paranormal story? Don't forget to subscribe to the Reddit guy and turn notifications on. Thank you. My great grandmother watched my great grandfather die. They were truly in love forever. After he died, she woke up every morning and said, damn it, because she was ready to pass away. My great aunts would hear her talking on a baby monitor they set up talking to members of the family who had already passed. Finally one afternoon, they heard her go, John, finally. Why are you always late? They were frozen as John was my great grandfather's name. They walked in 10 minutes later and she passed away. She was just waiting for her husband to come get her. My mom found an old picture of me with one of my late uncles. She asked me if I remembered him. He passed away when I was really young so I unfortunately don't remember much of him. She told me that he used to take care of me while both my parents were at work so we had gotten really close, he was essentially another father figure for me at the time. Supposedly, my parents were woken up one night by me crying and screaming his name. When they came into my room, they found me holding that picture of us, the one I mentioned earlier. They got a call from my aunt that morning that he suddenly passed away. My mom said the only other times I ever cried like that was when my dad had to leave for deployment. She's convinced that my uncle said goodbye to me that night. I grew up in a mobile home. When I was very little, maybe 8, I made a friend that lived in the floor. His name was Adam and he was my best friend all that year. He wasn't there every day and he was only there certain times of day, usually right as I would get home from school. Adam always asked me how I was and what I did that day. Sometimes he would ask me to go to different places in the house so he could hear me better, it was usually in the bathroom. I would sit in the tub and talk to him. My brother could hear him too but he lived with my grandparents and wasn't over often. Dad I don't think heard him, but Adam never talked when he was around. He wanted me to go outside a lot and sometimes I did but I never met Adam or saw him. Then one day Adam just stopped talking and I never heard from him again. I'm not sure if this is a ghost or spirit of some kind. I almost hope it was. That'd be easier to swallow than the very likely story that there was someone under my gosh darn house. Okay, so this next story stories are a little harder to believe. I mean, they happened to me, for goodness sake and I even have trouble believing them. When I was 16, I started dating this guy, let's call him Joe, and he and his friends liked to do the whole ghost hunting thing in abandoned properties. This was back before shows like Ghost Hunters made it into mainstream culture. There was one they were very fond of, on a road not too far away from the plantation in my first story. When we talked about the house, we'd just call it by the name of the road it was on. But I'm the interest of trying to keep some anonymity, Imma keep it to myself lol. So I'd only been dating Joe a few weeks, and one weekend he and I, along with two other friends, decided to mosey on over to this house and check it out. Now the story that everyone believed about this house, was that this guy snapped one day, killed his brother in the barn, and then took an axe and went through the house and killed his wife and children. Inside the house, on the second floor. Some walls did appear to have been chopped at with an axe. It's unclear why he did this. Some say his wife and brother were having an affair. Kids weren't really his, etc. And just to get this out of the way, I did try to find out the history of the place, but I never found anything to prove any of it happened. But it's history. Well I'm not sure if it had anything to do with things that happened there. So anyway, we go. We hang out and ding around checking the place out. Nothing happens. Boring, I know, haha. <laughs> but that night long after I left, I dreamed that I was in the barn of the property. Our friend, who I'll call Anthony cause he looked like Anthony Kiedis from RHCP, was with me. And there was this guy standing in front of me, telling me I could ask him any questions I wanted, and take pictures, but Anthony kept getting in my way and asking stupid shits. All I got from that dream was that this guy said he was a ghost. He liked to haunt the barn, and he was wearing a plaid flannel shirt with overalls, wearing a type of baseball hat, and he only had one arm. The next day when I see Joe, I tell him about it. I describe what the ghost was wearing. And then Joe looks at me pretty hardly, and asks me if the ghost was missing an arm. Up, uh, what? Yes he was Joe. How the duck do you know? 
Joe says his sister would see a man exactly as I described and missing a numb at night hanging out in the hallway of their house when she was a kid, talking to a couple of other men. Apparently Jolene would get up to use the bathroom at night, see these guys standing at the end of the hallway and they'd be gone by the time she's come out of the bathroom. I hadn't met Jolene yet at that point, and years later when she and I got to talking one day, I asked her about it, and she confirmed she did see an armless man all the time as a kid. But wait, it gets a little bit more weird. Joe and I had another friend, Tina. Tina had a little boy, and they lived with her parents in another town, but also somewhat close to the plantation and axe murder house. Her little boy would say there was a man in the basement of their house that kept talking to him. One day, he draws this man. Guess what he ducking drew? I have no idea if this thing was a ghost, or what. But the fact that three different people saw him in some way, years apart, but he always looked the same, just genuinely creeps me out. The other story with that house. Oh man. One night, total spur of the moment decision we decide to head up to the house, because for one, we had enough people to cover all the areas of house and barn and two one of us had a van so we could take one vehicle. We'd never had that many go at once, because well, when you do things like this it's best to not have four cars all parked in an abandoned house's driveway, haha, <laughs> so there were eight of us this time two in the barn, two in the basement, two for first floor, two for second floor, and two for the attic. At this point, I'd been to this house numerous times, I've been through the whole thing and knew it as well as my own house. And I was not on drugs, had nothing to drink that night. That's important. So Joe and I, we end up as the two who get to hang out on the second floor. Except there's something there right never seen before. This is going to sound so ducking stupid, but I swear on all my loved ones, it's true. There was a bathroom there that I had never seen before. I shiz you not, I'd never seen this bathroom before. And it connected between two bedrooms. And it was big with a giant claw footed tub, it would be really ducking hard to miss, you know? It freaked me the duck out. And everyone agreed that we'd hang on our assigned floor for at least 20 minutes. And Joe made us spend that time in that ducking bathroom. I was seriously wondering if it would fade out of existence with me in it. It didn't, thank god, ha ha ha. But I went back one last time to that house. I went with other friends that time, and no Joe. We went through that house, and again, I shiz you not, that bathroom was gone. I went through every doorway, and every hole in the wall, and double checked all closets. And that room was just gone, like it had never been there. I still don't know how to explain that. I really wish I had been drunk or on drugs that night. A girl I knew for a few years and was very good friends with passed away in a car accident. A few days later I have a dream that she's standing in the center of the road and I'm barreling towards her. I run into her but then she appears in the seat beside me. She forces my head toward her abdomen. Where her stomach would be there's a large mouth. The teeth are made of broken glass and sharp metal. She keeps saying hush hush. I wake up from the dream and I'm still hearing hush. I look at the foot of my bed and she's standing in my room. She walks through my door and into the hallway. I follow her. She walks down the hallway and vanishes through the front door of the house. I didn't realize at the time but my dad was on the couch. He asked me if I was okay and asked if the flickering lights are what woke me up. He didn't see her and I never noticed the lights flickering. My parents have both passed away. Their wishes were to be cremated, the ashes put in an ice box and be set on our wine rack. This wine rack has three shelves, and I was instructed to keep one shelf between the boxes. Well, my dad passed in 2011 and my mother in 2015. It took me a few weeks to find a box for my mom. In that time I kept her ashes in the same room but a few feet away from the wine rack. Apparently someone wasn't happy about this. Outside we had a doorbell. Every single night at 3am it would begin ringing and wake me up. I took the button portion inside so nobody could push it. Still would ring at 3am. Took the batteries out, still rang at the same time. Broke the whole thing apart, still rang. Our phone began to call itself and displayed my mom's name on the caller ID. Even though the bill was in my name. My dad's guitars hung on the wall next to this wine rack. The strings started breaking, one every few days. 
All of this stopped as soon as I got my mom a box and put her in the correct spot. None of it has happened since. I have zero intention of moving these boxes and if I have moved to a new house they will be transported together, with something acting as a divider between the two of them. Why do you think they wanted to be divided? Were they divorced? They were not divorced. Loved each other very much but were very opposite people. So being too close for too long of a time period inevitably led to some fight or another. I am the youngest of two older brothers. My middle brother had passed away in 2005 and one of my cousins had given birth to a boy a few years later, so he's never seen or heard of my brother before. Fast forward a few years more when the boy is old enough to talk, I think like 5, I guess my aunt was telling my mom that her son has an imaginary friend that he's been talking about named Michael, now both my aunt and mom played it off as a, kids will be kids, sort of thing. That was until my aunt began explaining this imaginary friend and how it had some coincidental things that directly related to my brother. First, this Michael would wake up the boy at night wanting to play basketball. Kid didn't mind cause he liked basketball too but it was in the middle of the night. Secondly, Michael tells him he has an owie and points to his throat, I'll get back to this later. Then the trippy part comes when my mom went to visit my aunt. She was sitting at the couch watching TV while my cousin and her son walked in. Her son was hesitant at first and then walked back to his room. My cousin went to my mom and told her, he was being shy cause he told me that is Michael's mom. I was then told if you show him a photo of my brother he points to it and says, that's Michael. Even when I went to their house the boy did the same thing and this time the cousin said, he whispered to me saying that's Michael's brother. Here's the kicker, my brother's name is Travis Michael last name redacted. He liked to play basketball in high school and he died from a freak accident at the San Luis Obispo Sand Dunes while riding an ATV. It shattered his Adam's apple and basically suffocated. This happened about 8 or so years ago around Thanksgiving at my grandma's house. Everyone was asleep except for me. The only people in the house were my grandparents, my mom, brother and I no one else. This is key. I was on the computer because I couldn't sleep. I turned on a small TV to watch Adult Swim while I browsed the internet. At around 4.30, I started getting a chill up my spine, and I heard some children laugh. Distinctly the voices of a little girl and boy. I know I'm all by myself, as far as being awake, so I turned to look at the TV and it was in the middle of an Inuyasha fight sequence so there's no way the laughter was coming from that. I checked the computer sound settings and I had every possible output muted, so it wasn't that either. I sat there confused for a few moments while the giggles of the two children were playing in the background. I figured maybe the radio in the kitchen was on. It was digital so maybe it just came on for some reason or it had a timer. I got up, and I kid you not, as I was walking to the door, with each step, the laughter grew louder. From giggling to guffaws to hard laughter. Once the guffaws started, I started to hear a baby cry as well. What's going through my mind now is, what the duck kind of radio shows this? And I just took three steps. Nowhere near the door. I took a few more steps and the laughter turned hysterical, if not maniacal. The baby's cries turned to screams and wails, as if it were in pain. I was trembling and terrified with each step I took to the doorway, but my mind was on autopilot. I needed to get out of there and across the hall to my mom who surely would help me and notice the weird sounds too. The last couple of steps increased the laughter and crying to an almost deafening decibel. It was like I was at a concert and the speakers were directly in my ears, blasting noise. It was painful and scared the shiz out of me. I took all the courage I had and as soon as I reached the doorway I was going to sprint. I started to run but then something shoved me. I felt these hands at my chest push me back into the room with enough force to throw me off balance. The crying and laughter stopped as soon as I was back in the room. This all happened within 20-30 seconds, but it felt like 10 minutes. I was so scared I cried and slept in the tiny armchair before my grandma came in the room and made me sleep in her bed downstairs. I was helping my younger brother move into an apartment with his buddies and had to bring my two very young daughters with me. My youngest at the time was about two and a half or three, and fearless. She went to different rooms with my brother, exploring and having a jolly old time. Until she got to the kitchen. Upon entering, 
My daughter froze. Her eyes were huge and fearful and within 10 seconds she was screaming bloody murder and running for me as fast as she could, mumbling about, die ad, the lady, in the kitchen. Brother and I tried laughing it off, redirecting her and taking her mind off it, but my normally calm kid was hysterical and we had to leave. She told me in bed that night the lady had red eyes and was scary, if you knew my daughter you'd understand how unlike her all this was. She was 100% convinced that she saw a lady just standing in the kitchen, and still to this day, 7 years later, she swears she did. I don't believe in ghosts or what have you, but her reaction made us question that. There is a place called, Meadowbrook Manor in Rochester Hills, Missouri, my hometown. It's on the campus of Oakland University, it was owned by the Dodge family and quite a few people have died there including young. My buddy worked there 4 years and my wife hosts events there, I even proposed to her on the property. The house is both beautiful with stuff like secret staircases through bookshelves but it's also very creepy. There are a few known ghosts including Caramel Apple Girl. The story is she is a young, quiet ghost that lives in the house and holds a caramel apple with peanuts. Numerous people have claimed to see her including my best friend who is a no bullshiz guy who would never tell anyone. He was cleaning up at the end of an event there and he saw a girl on the staircase eating a caramel apple. He asked her, are you okay and she said she was lost. My buddy said, hold on, we'll find your parents so come on down. He turned to grab a phone for a moment and turned around and she wasn't there. He checked the stairs and the peanuts were there. He and a few others roamed the house looking for the girl. He called me and I drove over real quick because I thought this was awesome. After another 30 minutes of searching we finally called the police and the employees locked the place up. When we were on the side of the house chatting with the university's police officers, a light turned on in one of the bedrooms and we immediately freaked out because that house had been searched for hours. My buddy looks at the two cops and they look at us and we're all figuring out who's going to do what. The cop starts walking over, stops, looks at us and says, duck that because he had heard the stories. He called in a bunch of backup before searching and apparently there were no peanuts on the stairs when they went in.